When the pioneers of the auto industry presented their new horseless carriage to a curious public back in the late 19th century, the naysayers all laughed and asked what was the point of a noisy, expensive and dangerous contraption that can only travel at fifth the speed of a horse and about half the speed of a pony and trap. And when in the early 1970s the concept of national electricity generation via wind power was presented to the government of the windiest country in Europe, which was the United Kingdom, the politicians of the day dismissed it as unfinished and inefficient, preferring instead to plumb the depths of the North Sea to look for oil and gas. But here's the thing, in both cases, despite the howls of disbelief and discouragement from the deniers and laggards of the time, the engineers and inventors of these contraptions knew that the objections being levelled at their machines were nothing more than technical issues that could and would be understood and overcome as their devices went into real world service. And so it was that people like Carl Benz and Henry Ford became household names and very rich. And in the case of wind power, Denmark, whose government allowed farmers across the country to test out different solutions for improving efficiency of wind power and bring those ideas to a center of excellence in Copenhagen, ended up cornering a market that even by the mid 1990s was worth about $6 billion. Today we have precisely the same situation with electric vehicles. But now the naysayers, having had just about every single objection they could possibly think of, more or less obliterated by the latest crop of extremely high quality electric vehicles, led largely by the bloody minded genius of Elon Musk, are only really left with one thing they can moan about, and that's battery charge time. Well, if you're one of those naysayers, then bad luck, because a group of researchers at Pennsylvania State University have just nailed that one too. Hello, and welcome to Just Have a Think. It's the generally held wisdom in the mainstream media today that electric vehicles can never be a proper competitor for internal combustion engine cars until the consumer can charge them up in more or less the same amount of time as it takes to fill up a tank on fossil fuels. So in 2018, the US Department of Energy set a goal to develop extremely fast charging, or XFC technologies, that can add 200 miles of range to an electric vehicle in just 10 minutes. Up until now, the response of the electric vehicle manufacturers has been to simply increase the amount of electricity going into the battery so that it charges more quickly. In fact, the latest chargers put out a quite mind-boggling 400 kilowatts of power. But no electric vehicle on the road today has a battery pack that's equipped to handle such a massive influx of electrons in such a short space of time. And even for those high-end cars that are being developed to cope with this onslaught, it's still a pretty blunt instrument. The two biggest hurdles to overcome in XFC technology are the apparently overwhelming need to keep things cool during charging and the extremely inconvenient tendency for something called lithium plating to occur at these very high charge rates. Current lithium batteries mainly use graphite for the anode material. In the charging process at normal temperatures, some of the lithium ions intercalate or interweave with the graphite layers but some of them get stuck to the surface of the electrode, causing this plating effect. As the rate of charge increases, more of the lithium ions tend to plate the electrode and less of them get involved in the whole intercalating thing. At very high charging rates, this lithium plating becomes a pretty big problem, which leads to a drastic reduction in the capacity of the battery. For those of you with a scientific leaning, here's some stats. Recent data of 25 amp hour automotive lithium ion cells showed that cell life at 20% capacity loss plummeted from more than 2,500 equivalent full cycles, or what they call EFCs, at a standard charge rate, commonly referred to as 1C, down to only about 200 EFCs when the charge was increased to 4C, or four times the rate of charge. Conventional industry wisdom says that keeping everything cool during the charging cycle will generally make the process more efficient. But the team at Penn State University seem to have developed an effective way to minimize this lithium plating that extreme fast charging causes by actually increasing the temperature at which the charging takes place. The researchers found that upping the heat from 20 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius can increase the lithium graphite interweaving thing by about 13 times 
and more interweaving, or intercalation to use the proper sciencey word, means less lithium plating. The extra heat also increases the rate at which the lithium diffuses into the graphite by 5.6 times and increases the electrolyte conductivity by 1.9 times, all of which significantly mitigates or eliminates altogether the lithium plating problem. So it looks like we've got a winner. But all of those clever bods working on battery development technology will tell you that finding improvements in lithium ion battery performance is a bit like playing a game of whack-a-mole. Improve one aspect and you generally get some kind of degradation somewhere else. And I imagine they all find this extremely frustrating. In this case, the increase of temperature causes an acceleration of something called solid electrolyte interphase growth, or SEI. And that's a completely new layer inside the cell made up of bits of decomposed electrolyte and bits of lithium. And as this layer grows, it uses lithium up and that causes yet more reduction in battery capacity. So yet again, we get back to the generally accepted view that lithium ion batteries work best and last longest if they're kept at room temperature, which is why the Department of Energy made the cooling of battery cells one of the priority objectives in their 10 minute charging challenge. And all of that stuff makes the Penn State research findings all the more remarkable, because what they've come up with is a way to allow extra fast charging of lithium ion batteries that substantially reduces the need to cool the battery during charging. And they achieve that through something called asymmetric temperature modulation, or ATM. The idea is to heat the cell up to a high temperature of about 60 degrees Celsius during the charge stage to prevent the problem of lithium plating, but only keep the cells at that temperature for a short period of time, 10 minutes to be precise, which is the exact amount of time that the Department of Energy has challenged developers to achieve for the full charging cycle. And because that pesky solid electrolyte interface growth depends on a longer period of charging cycle time, this unwanted phenomenon also gets minimized in a short charge cycle. The unique insight applied by Penn State is a self-heating lithium ion battery structure, which embeds thin nickel foils inside a cell as internal heating elements. One end of the foils is welded with anode tabs and connected to the negative terminal, and the other end extends outside the cell to make a third terminal. The scientists call this the activation terminal because that means they get to use yet another acronym, the ACT terminal. This terminal is connected to the positive via a switch and hey presto, you've got a flowing circuit with an input current coming in and heating up the foil. But because this is lithium ion battery technology and not a Sunday afternoon walk in the park, it turns out it's not quite as simple as just inserting a heating element within the cell that runs off the same current that the cell uses for recharging. You have to make sure the energy goes to the right place at the right time to maximize charge efficiency and therefore minimize charge time, which of course is the overall goal here. So the resistance of the foil had to be carefully tailored to ensure that the product of this resistance and the current flowing through the foil was close to an open circuit cell voltage. And that ensures that while the ACT current is switched on, the vast majority of the energy is flowing into the foil instead of charging the battery cells. The team used a current of 57 amps for the charging cycle, and most of that current, at least for a brief period, is channeled straight into the nickel foil. That's a very high current going through very thin foils, and the consequence is immense heat warming up the cell from about 21 Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius in just 30 seconds. At that point, the ACT current is switched off and all of the energy in the circuit can now flow into the cell to do the charging. The total charging time to get to 80% state of charge for the 9.5 amp hour plug-in hybrid battery that was selected for the demonstration, including the 30 second heating stage, was 503 seconds or 8.4 minutes. During the discharge phase, the cell temperature dropped rapidly without the need for any external cooling. The average cell temperature during the charge phase was 49 degrees Celsius, and in the discharge phase, that dropped to 28 degrees Celsius. And it's that temperature difference that represents the asymmetry in the asymmetric temperature modulation method. The researchers found that by forcing the cell temperature up to charge at 60 degrees Celsius and then causing it to discharge at around about room temperature, the cells sustained 1700 cycles 
of six times faster charging to 80% state of charge with a 20% capacity loss. For comparison, a control cell charged at six times normal charge speeds directly at room temperature only survived 60 cycles. Of course, the team did carry out far more testing than we've gone through in this video to make sure that their results were robust. The technical detail of all that is outside the scope of this video, but it's all there in the text of the paper, and I'll leave a link to that document in the description box below. When these results were extrapolated to give a meaningful result for the average everyday EV driver, they did show that an electric vehicle could be charged from zero to 200 miles of range in just 10 minutes which is just about enough time to scroll through your Twitter feed or nip into the store to grab a coffee. And based on this extremely fast asymmetric temperature modulation charging method, a typical battery electric vehicle would retain 91% of its capacity and 86.2% of its fast charged specific energy even after 500,000 miles of driving. And that's a pretty spectacular result by any current standards. Assistant researcher on the project, Zhao Zhuangyang, said currently the lithium ion battery is the only viable technology for vehicle applications. In terms of future research, we're aiming to reduce the charging time from 10 minutes to 5 minutes. And if we achieve that ambitious goal, charging an EV is literally the same as refueling a gasoline car. It will take some time to go from laboratory testing to real world production line technology, but if it scales as expected, this new breakthrough will provide the turbo boost that the EV industry needs to finally, once and for all, totally and completely dispel any fear, uncertainty and doubt being spread by our friends in the fossil fuel propaganda department. That's it for this week. Please do give us a like and a share if you found the program useful. And if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel to support the work we're doing. It costs you nothing to do that, of course. All you need to do is click on that icon there. As always, thanks very much for watching. Have a great week and remember to just have a think. See you next week.